Good afternoon and welcome to August, the first Wednesday of the month, and our weekly check-in, along with a poem, a song, and a prayer. In terms of announcements, today we are excited to open our doors to the public for the first of four organ recitals this month. These will be held from noon until 1. The actual performances begin at 12.15. Please note that we'll be following current COVID protocols, so masks are required and seating is based on distancing so there could be limitations of numbers allowed in. Our capacity is approximately 100 people. This week features Gabriel O'Brien at the organ, student at the University of King's College, and next week, Gibson McMillan of the Anglican Parish of Sackville, New Brunswick, followed by Nick Halley and Paul Halley. Also speaking of music, coming up on August 19th, 7.30 p.m., a performance by a brass ensemble of young musicians called Hallabrass. They will be performing music by Ewald, Halst, and Armstrong. That's August 19th, 7.30 here in the cathedral, a free will offering. Again, COVID protocols in effect. And in terms of worship services, we are holding in-person services Sundays at 10 a.m. We do ask that you make reservations via Eventbrite on our Cathedral Church of All Saints website or phone or email the office to assure that there will be a seat for you. Also, Wednesday mornings at 7.30 a.m. and Fridays at noon, we hold Eucharists here in the building. You can also join us online for morning prayer Monday through Saturday, and a meditation group is offered Thursday evenings at 6.30 via Zoom. Please send an email to prayasyoucan3, the number three, at gmail.com for the link. Now, as our theme for today, we turn to the night sky. Over the weekend, I heard an interesting interview on CBC Radio that identified the special status that has been awarded to Yarmouth and the Acadian Shore region of Nova Scotia. Here, you can find some of the darkest and clearest skies in all of North America. This region in southwestern Nova Scotia is the first place to receive a designation by the International Starlight Foundation. The International Starlight Foundation is a nonprofit entity created in 2009 through the support of the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, and is also supported by the International Astronomical Union and by the World Tourism Organization. Their primary purpose is to develop programs and actions to protect and defend the sky and devaluing it as a resource necessary for life and the intangible heritage of humanity. Part of their mission document reads, areas suitable for unimpaired astronomical observation constitute an asset in short supply on our planet and the conservation represents a minimum effort in comparison with the benefits they contribute to our know-how and scientific and technological development. The protection of sky quality in these singular places must be given priority in regional, national, and international scientific and environmental policies. The measures and provisions must be made to safeguard clear skies and to protect such spaces from the harmful effects of light, radioelectric emissions, and air pollutions. So congratulations to Nova Scotia for being the first place in North America to receive this designation, and another reason when you go outside to look up. So that got me thinking about songs about stars, songs like Rihanna's Diamonds, One Republic's Counting Stars, Rewrite the Stars from the musical The Greatest Showman. But I go back a bit further in time to 1889, and a Dutch painter by the name of Vincent van Gogh, or van Gogh. Born March 30th, 1853 in the Netherlands to an upper-class family, Vincent began drawing as a child and was described as serious, quiet, and thoughtful. As a young man, he worked as an art dealer, often traveling, but he became depressed after he was transferred to London. He turned to religion for a time and spent time as a Protestant missionary in southern Belgium. Ill health led to periods of isolation, and painting became his way of expressing himself. 
Van Gogh suffered from psychotic episodes and delusions, and though he worried about his mental stability, he often neglected his physical health as well, not eating and drinking heavily. In 1886, he moved to Paris, where, according to Wikipedia, he met members of the avant-garde in the art world, including Emile Bernard and Paul Gauguin. His paintings grew brighter as, as he developed a new approach to still lifes and local landscapes. However, his friendship with Gauguin ended, at, ended after a heated confrontation, and in a rage, he severed off part of his left ear. Van Gogh voluntarily admitted himself to care in several psychiatric hospitals, including a stay at St. Remy. This period became one of his most prolific in terms of his painting. In a decade, he created about 2,100 artworks, including about 860 oil paintings, most of which date from the last two years of his life. These include landscapes, still lifes, portraits, self-portraits, and are characterized by bold colors and dramatic, impulsive, expressive brushwork that contributed to his fame and the foundations of modern art. It was at St. Remy in June of 1899 that he painted one of his most recognized works, The Starry Night. It depicts a view from the east-facing window of his room at St. Remy just before sunrise with the addition of, a, of an imaginary village. Quote, through the iron-barred window, he wrote to his brother Theo, May 23, 1889, I can see an enclosed square of wheat, above which in the morning I watch the sun rise in all its glory, unquote. In a letter to painter Emile Bernard from late November of 1889, however, Van Gogh referred to that painting as a failure. He would eventually discharge himself from hospital and moved again near Paris, but his depression continued to haunt him, and on July the 7th, 1890, he took his own life. While he was commercially unsuccessful during his lifetime, and he was considered by many a madman and a failure, following his death he came to be seen as a misunderstood genius, and today Van Gogh's works are among the world's most expensive paintings ever sold, and his legacy is honored by a museum in his name in Amsterdam, which holds the world's largest collection of his paintings and drawings. The painting, The Starry Night, has been part of the collection of the Museum of Modern Art in New York City since 1941. So that's a long introduction for the song choice for today, a song titled simply Vincent, a tribute to both the painter and this particular painting by musician Don McLean. Don McLean III was born October 2, 1945 in New York. As an American singer-songwriter, he's probably best known for his 1971 hit song, American Pie. It was an eight and a half minute folk rock song about the loss of innocence, the unknown and unexpected twists and turns and tragedies of life, and also a tribute to what he called the day the music died a reference to a plane crash that took the lives of rock and roll legends Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and the big bopper J.P. Richardson. Though some of his early musical influences included the likes of Frank Sinatra and Buddy Holly, as a teenager, McLean became interested in folk music, and he learned the art of performing from his friend and mentor, Pete Seeger. Not a bad mentor to have. McLean said about this song, again sourcing Wikipedia. In the autumn of 1970, I had a job singing in public school systems, playing my guitar in classrooms. I was sitting on the veranda one morning reading a biography of Van Gogh, and suddenly I knew I had to write a song arguing that he wasn't crazy, that he had an illness, and so did his brother Theo. This makes it different in my mind to the garden variety of crazy. So I sat down with a print of Starry Night and wrote the lyrics out on a paper bag. By the way, in July of 2020, that original handwritten paper with the lyrics sold for a million and a half dollars. 
So look that song up, Vincent by Don McLean. Now before moving on to a poem, I should note that one could perhaps make a case for a poem and a song on a star theme known by almost everyone. Along with hot cross buns, it's probably the staple of any budding musician. This little ditty written by Jane Taylor, a woman born way back in 1783 in London, she would later become a prominent English poet and novelist. She is the author, author of this little poem turned song, which maybe you've guessed, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Her original includes five verses, verses that I didn't know existed. So you might want to look up the original version of Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. But my actual poetic selection is one written by William Cullen Bryant. Born November 3rd, 1794 in a log cabin in Cummington, Western Massachusetts, he would become one of the great poets of his time, listed as one of the, quote, fireside poets. That was a reference to how families would gather around the hearth to read, recite, and enjoy poetry. The group is typically thought to include Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, William Cullen Bryant, John Greenleaf Whittier, James Russell Lowell, Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr., and Wolf, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Martin Luther King Jr. once quoted a line from one of Bryant's poems titled The Battlefield in a speech he gave in Washington, D.C. in 1957 at a rally on voter rights. His speech was titled, Give Us the Ballot. He said, quote, there is something in this universe which justifies William Cullent Bryant in saying, truth crushed to earth will rise again. So here is a poem by William Cullen Bryant titled, Song of the Stars. When the radiant morn of creation broke, and the world in the smile of God awoke, and the empty realms of darkness and death were moved through their depth by his mighty breath, and orbs of beauty and spheres of flame from the void abyss by myriads came. In the joy of youth as they darted away through the widening wastes of space to play, their silver voices in chorus rung, and this was the song the bright ones sung. Away, away through the wide, wide sky, the fair blue fields that before us lie, each sun with the worlds that round him roll, each planet poised on her turning pole, with her isles of green and her clouds of white, and her waters that lie like fluid light. For the source of glory uncovers his face, and the brightness overflows unbounded space, and we drink as we go the luminous tides in our ruddy air and our blooming sides. Lo, yonder the living splendors play, away on our joyous path, away. Look, look through our glittering ranks afar, in the infinite azure star after star, how they brighten and bloom as they swiftly pass, how the verdure runs o'er each rolling mass, and the path of the gentle winds is seen where the small waves dance and the young woods lean. And see where the brighter day beams pour, how the rainbows hang in the sunny shower, and the moon and eve with their pomps of hue shift o'er the bright planets and shed their dews, and twixt them both o'er the teeming ground, with her shadowy cone the night goes round. Away, away in our blossoming bowers, in the soft air wrapping these spheres of ours, in the seas and fountains that shine with morn, see love is brooding and life is born, and breathing myriads are breaking from night, to rejoice like us in motion and light. Glide on in your beauty, ye youthful spheres, to weave the dance that measures the years. Glide on in the glory and gladness sent to the furthest wall of the firmament, the boundless visible smile of him to the veil of whose brows your lamps are dim. 
poem by William Cullen Brown. In closing with prayer, here are the words from one of our Eucharistic prayers in our Book of Alternative Services that celebrates God's creation. It begins, it is right to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, sustainer of the universe. You are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the stewards of creation. Pour out your spirit upon the whole earth and make it your new creation. Gather your church together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom where peace and justice are revealed. That we with all your people of every language, race and nation may share the banquet you have promised. Through Christ, with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, creator of all. Glory to you forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. Keep in touch, stay safe, and keep the faith until we meet again.